In this video tutorial, we're going to show how a user can consider pore strips for a two-way or one-way post-tension slab in Adapt Builder. And this is specific to Adapt Floor Pro. Um, and we're going to use a two-way slab as our example. So we'll go ahead now and get started. We're going to launch Adapt Builder. And in Builder in the splash screen, we're going to select the option for Floor Pro with PT. We'll be using the US unit system and we'll select OK. And we're just going to model um, a simple slab here. We're going to model this using the um, floor wizard and we're going to have to make a few modifications for banded tendons, for example. So we'll go ahead and model with the floor wizard. In the X direction, we're going to have um, uh, 10 spans and the span lengths we're going to say are 30 feet. We'll change the column size to a 20 by 24. In the Y direction, we're going to have three spans. Those are going to be 28 feet. Um, and then we have just some loading. We're not going to really do anything with the loading. And uh, we're going to model both distributed and banded tendons just by default using the floor wizard. Okay, so we have this long rectangular slab, which is really too long, uh, maybe for um, the length of the tendon and also if we have any restraint issues in plane then this could be problematic. We're going to go ahead and actually force a couple of restraint issues. We're going to put an arrangement of shear walls that look something like this um, and replace these these columns and then what we're going to do is we're going to say okay with this particular condition we're going to need to add a pore strip maybe we'll just center it in this span we'll assume that it's short during construction until it's closed you know we we could make the pore strip so that it's offset from either of these frame lines but we'll just select an arbitrary location in the middle of this bay um, so to do this let's go ahead and i'm going to go back to visibility and select default display just to turn off the uh, tendons and i'll come into model and I'm going to model um, just some walls and I'll change the wall thickness here. I'll just change these to 14, uh, 14 inch thick walls. Okay, and we're going to use the snap option here. So we're gonna snap to the center of the column like so and we'll just create the, the walls. I'll just leave the columns in place. We don't really need to delete those for any uh, particular purpose associated with the, the tutorial here. So we have our walls. Now because the program assumes when we analyze that everything is installed at the same day and it achieves full strength instantaneous, there's really no sequencing to speak of um, at this point in Adapt Floor Pro. So the purpose of really of modeling a pore strip is just to be able to um, properly adjust where the tendons terminate, um, the anchor at which they terminate, and also how to set up our design strips. So the pore strip can be modeled either as just a polygon, meaning lines, or it could be modeled, um, uh, or polygon created from lines, or it could be modeled as, an, as a separate slab entity. We're going to model it as a separate slab entity, just so the user um, sees that particular way and instance of modeling this. So the first thing I'll do is I want to center it on these columns. Okay, so I'll use the home. I'm going to go to a line tool and I'll just create a line here. And then I want to turn on snap to midpoint and also snap orthogonal. And now I can create this, this line, you know, slicing this, this slab. And I'm going to take this line and I'm going to offset this um, in the X direction. We'll say negative two feet. We're going to say the pore strip is four feet. And then actually I moved it. Now we're going to we're going to copy it over four feet. So I'll, I'll, the line is selected. I'll make this a positive four feet. Positive and negative correspond to the global axes. And this ultimately becomes the line work that I can create the pore strip from. Um, so we're now going to take this. Um, we're going to take this modeling option here and we're going to go ahead and model a new slab in this region. Okay, so I'm going to use the, the snap to intersection. I'll turn off snap orthogonal. That's not as useful here for this. 
and I'll just model that slab. Now because we have three slabs that are identical in thickness and offset one, two, and three, this is really an illegal way to model this. We can't have these overlapping. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pull this point all the way back here, I'll pull this point all the way back, and then I'll model this third slab. So all of the slabs are abutting. Um, in order to do that, again, I'm going to use this line tool. I'm just going to create a snappable mark point there. And we'll go ahead and just pull this all the way back to here. And then I'll come back and just model the slab again, like so. Okay. Now I have three unique slab regions. I can remove these lines if I want and delete those. I'm done using those construction lines. Um, we're going to go ahead now and save this. Okay, now we're going to turn on the, the tendons. So we'll go back to tendon, show tendons. And in this case, you know, the banded tendons are running um, north-south. The uniform tendons are now running east-west. So this becomes um, a little bit difficult, or let's say a little more time consuming to deal with when we have tendons that have already been modeled. If I had not modeled the tendons, then I could easily just model these to the face of the pore strip on one side and model them to the face on the other side, and I'm done with that. But to post edit the tendons becomes a little more um, involved. So what we're going to do first is I'm actually going to um, delete. We're not going to really edit them. We're going to delete them and remodel them just to show that process um, because it's a bit easier. But I'm actually going to do that on the top half. And in the bottom half, I'm going to edit. I'll show both, both ways. So what I'll do first is we're going to take what, I, what I'll call a master tendon here, and I'll right-click and delete points on the tendon. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We're going to right. Uh, actually, I'll leave that seventh point. I'm going to move that all the way over to here. Okay, at the face of the pore strip. The spacing between the tendons. If I go to home and just measure this. This spacing is 1.87 feet. So now we're going to take this tendon, but before I do that, I want to make sure I have the right um, shape for this end span. If we double click on that tendon, and I look at that shape. This is actually a cantilever down. That might be the shape we want. Maybe we just want a straight shape that anchors at the CG of the slab. The slab is 8 inches thick. If we're trying to create a shape that kind of has reverse parabola, um, uh, you know, if we were to we were to project it out, then we would have to use a different shape and and somehow manipulate that particular shape. So I could use um, we could use a partial parabola, for example. We could use a reverse parabola and just modify and manipulate the points or an extended reverse. So we're going to say that this is our shape. We anchor it at the CG on both sides um, of the of the pore strip. And now I'll go ahead and I'll copy this. So we're going to modify by coordinates. This is going to be in the negative y direction, negative 1.87. I don't know how many there are. We're going to say there's 15. Just we'll see where that takes us. So we copy those down, and that's how we would edit this particular direction. I, I'm going to copy another 12 down. This is... 12, copy. Okay, so that gets us back to where we were. Now, what I will do with this uh, cable, okay, the first thing I'm going to do is copy it. So I'm going to, um, actually, I'm going to mirror it first, and then I'll copy. Okay, so let's, we're going to select the tendon, and we're going to go to uh, the option modify, and we want to mirror this. We're going to mirror it off of this point. And the end point will be that slab edge. So we have a vertical uh, mirror line. And this becomes our, our new tendon. Okay, And then I could basically just move that tendon from this point over to a point along this edge. Now, I might need to use a uh, um, construction line to grab that point. So I can select this point. I can select uh, modify. 
move in plane and I can select the base point and then my reference point over here and we'll say move okay now I need to modify this um, this tendon okay it has too many um, spans so we're going to go ahead and I'll just delete that point right there and then I can come back and move this point and then adjust the end span again so this end span is a reverse parabola I want that to be a um, cantilever down now notice when we mirror it the the mirror does not flip this image so now we're kind of working from both directions which can be confusing so rather than mirror what we recommend um, is really just to move this to copy it over to this point so I deleted that line I shouldn't have deleted that we're going to come back create that construction line again and I'll just use control C control V okay and then again we're going to delete out some points really just one point and I'll move that over to there and I'll modify the shape again as needed okay and then I can copy those I can copy those down um, we have what 27 copies so we'll go to modify and we're going to copy this okay and that's a modification now if we were to model this obviously we would just simply model one side copy down model the other side copy down so that's what we'll show now this this is similar in nature to what we did previous but rather than actually modeling this I'm just going to modify this first one okay, and again I'll come back and delete some points there's my first I'm not going to change that end span but there's the first tendon now I can copy that vertically again we'll use um, the Y direction 1.87 I'll, I'll copy this let's say 20 times okay and then if I was to actually can create a tendon here and have it be in alignment wherever we want to place that um, I'm gonna select this endpoint for example okay I want to create the tendon on top of that line so we'll go to model the tendon I'm going to add a tendon this is my anchor point and then I can just kind of eyeball the the center of these bands that's how we have the others set up okay and then I'll use the option for snap intersection and once we've done that then we can go ahead and define the properties of this tendon the number of strands the effect of stress or calculated stress or force and the shape and then we could again just copy that vertically using the modify option so we'll do 1.87 this is probably 35 uh, we have overlap <laughs> multiple tendons here but that's basically how we would how we would model against the pore strip the same process could be done in the banded direction these are just more more modeled tendons okay if we look at the design strips um, if I turn on my X strips you can see this is continuous uh, through the pore strip so there's a which is okay we're gonna get design cuts along here there will be a cut in this zone which will basically be designed this will be designed as an RC section these others will be designed as PT because they're being cut by the post tensioning so you'll actually get the amount of rebar necessary in the pore strip that might be spliced and and overlapped through that strip as long as we have these support lines being generated so um, in the other direction you know we have strips that are probably going to end up you know ending up inside of the pore strip in the long direction so we might want to avoid that what we'll do in this case is we're going to just use a Y splitter and I'll put a splitter along that edge and along that edge and once I've done that I can generate my strips 
I'm going to turn off the strip generation. You can see there's the section cut inside the pore strip. You could disjoint this. You could actually stop this here, put a small pore, a, a small support line there, and then start it again. And in the new upcoming version, for any design cut or any, excuse me, any support line or strip, you actually have the option to set the spacing of sections or actually to define the number, um, max number of sections within a strip. So you can control the density of section cuts even within a small um, length of four feet. Okay, so in the other direction, what we have is this. Now, if I wanted to get a transverse set of cuts through this, I would then need to model, again, a, another support line, like so. And here I might say, okay, for this particular strip, I want to um, have at least the minimum number of sections is three. Maybe I want that to be 50. And I'll generate the strips again. Okay, this this um, support line may be too long for that input there. So let's go to max number of sections per span. We'll say that this is 50 and regenerate. Okay, there we go. Now we get strips inside of the support line along the strip path. So this is how we would um, model that type of a condition. If you have any questions, please let us know and you can contact us at support at adaptsoft.com. Thank you.